today's show, China dominates the electric vehicle world, Elon Musk promises that you'll soon be able to tell your Model 3 to do virtually anything with your voice alone, and why using an orange to trick Tesla's autopilot software is something you really shouldn't do. Coming up next. This is Ecotricity's Ecotech Roundup show from New Zealand's only Carbon Zero certified renewable electricity company. We're 100% Kiwi and 50% community owned. Switch today at ecotricity.co.nz. Hi there, I'm Nikki, your resident Ecotech host and fan of all things that make the world a cleaner, more sustainable place to live. And if it gets you from point A to point B, well, that's even better. It's been known for some time now that China is now the world's largest auto market, with recently released figures showing the nation experienced a total 3% growth in vehicle sales in 2017 compared to 2016. But while China's vehicle market is still growing, when many other markets around the world are either shrinking or stagnating, it turns out that China's electric vehicle and plug-in hybrid sales for 2017 were a massive 53% more than they were during 2016. The majority of those so-called new energy vehicles, 652,000 out of 777,000 in total, were battery electric rather than plug-in hybrids. Sure, EV sales are still just 2.9% in total for new car sales in China, but that's far higher than the 1.1% for the US, and a far higher volume because China's a larger market. And that should mean lower EV prices for everyone, thanks to the economies of scale. Just ahead of this week's Detroit Auto Show, General Motors Cruise Division unveiled its latest generation autonomous test vehicle based on the Chevrolet Bolt EV. But while previous versions have looked reasonably similar to GM's popular plug-in hatchback, this latest version is missing a very important standard fit item, the driver's seat. And by that, I don't mean the vehicle doesn't have a driver's seat, it doesn't have a steering wheel or pedals, just two front passenger seats. What's more, GM seems confident that we could see this Level 5 autonomous vehicle being tested on the public roads by next year, and it's already submitted paperwork to prove to regulators that this vehicle is ready for the challenges of completely hands-free operation. Wow! For as long as I can remember, Italian supercar manufacturer Ferrari has been extremely dismissive of electric vehicles, choosing instead to focus on doing everything it possibly can to extend the lifespan of the internal combustion engine. This week, however, Ferrari CEO Sergio Marchione confirmed in Detroit that Ferrari was bringing an electric supercar to market that will compete against Tesla's next-generation Roadster. He also said that Ferrari's first SUV will hit the market by 2020, adding that it would be the fastest on the market. It's not clear if that vehicle will be electric, I think he was talking about two different vehicles, but I guess Ferrari is very keen to not let Tesla get the glory, right? With more and more Tesla Model 3 deliveries happening across the US, including the first configuration spaces opening up for East Coast customers, many customers and fans are now turning their attention to Tesla's famous over-the-air software updates, questioning what features Tesla has planned for their cars in future years. And so, in responding to a customer who complained that most Model 3 features currently require screen input, Musk promised that there's a software update coming down the pipe in the not-too-distant future that will let Model 3 owners do pretty much anything via voice command, negating the distraction that occurs when you have to turn your attention to that massive touchscreen display. There's no word on how soon soon is, but I'll keep you posted as this one develops. As electric cars have occupied an ever-increasingly important role in the automotive industry, we've started to see more and more automakers branch out into the grid storage and grid-tied energy products, with Tesla, Nissan, Renault, Mercedes-Benz and BMW all offering either commercial products or pilot projects. Well, now we can add Audi to that list, courtesy of the Audi Smart Energy Network, a new pilot project in the Ingolstadt and Zurich regions that tie photovoltaic solar systems with stationary storage batteries, smart grid technology, and electric cars. The goal? To develop a system that lets users manage their own energy harvested from their roof to charge their cars while helping stabilize the local grid. Audi says the system forms a virtual power plant and should help reduce local grid demand and CO2 to boot. 
Can't complain with that now, can you? Next up, it's a time for a quick reminder about Ecotricity's Eco Wholesale Energy product that could be saving you up to $400 a year on your home electricity bill or $4,000 on your business electricity bill. It works by linking you directly to 100% renewable wholesale prices after paying a small admin fee, and it's the most affordable carbon zero certified electricity that Kiwis can buy. So make sure you sign up and start saving those pennies today by following the link below. The boring company, Elon Musk's most recent transportation-themed startup, spent quite a lot of time last year selling some 50,000 logoed hats to eager boring company fans. And now the company has written to 10 of those hat customers, completely at random we're told, to offer them a chance to tour the first section of the boring company tunnel under LA and, if they're really good, get a chance to drive the boring company's famous boring machine. Given those lucky 10 will be piloting a positively massive piece of machinery capable of gouging a hole in the earth, I don't think it's going to be boring at all. So here's to the lucky 10 and I look forward to hearing or reading about your exploits in the near future. Alongside all other car companies at Detroit eagerly promising big things for the electric vehicle world, BMW used the famous auto show to announce that it's 2021 iNext EV, one of many new all-electric models to launch in the coming few years, will feature a range of up to 435 miles per charge. That range, which I presume is based on the European test cycle, would place the iNext squarely within Tesla's territory, with Level 3 autonomous driving capabilities at launch and upgradability to Level 4 autonomy a year later. It's designed to cross-shop against the Tesla Model Y, supposedly, a car which hasn't even yet been revealed, so there's certainly an interesting fight squaring up in the luxury car marketplace. Bollinger, the startup behind the rugged, go-anywhere, do-anything, all-electric B1 SUV, started its life in New York State, but this week it announced its official move to Detroit, where it hopes to immerse itself into motor city life and bring the B1 to market as quickly as possible. While it's not a requirement that automakers base themselves out of Detroit, doing so should give Bollinger a much easier time when it comes to prototyping, production and building its first vehicle, not to mention to help it put the motor into Motor City. Sorry, I, I couldn't resist. For some time, Norway has been known for its drive towards zero emission mobility, enjoying the highest electric vehicle adoption rate per capita of any country in the world. And now, with more than half of new cars sold in the nation being electric, it seems Norway is turning its attention to the skies instead. Yep, that's right. Avanor, Norway's airport operator, has called for all of the country's short-haul operators, operating flights less than 90 minutes in length, to be flying electric airplanes by 2040. Planning to launch its own commercial route with a 19-seat electric plane in 2025, Avinor is confident that the future for short haul lies in electric aviation, and I, for one, can't wait to give it a go. So I'm hoping they save me a seat. And finally, when Tesla first launched its autopilot Level 3 autonomous driving system, it didn't require a driver to hold onto the steering wheel, as many other systems do. But in order to guard against abuse and people doing some really crazy and illegal things with their cars, Tesla rolled out an update that requires you to keep your hands on the wheel or the system will eventually notice and shut down. Well, this week, one Tesla owner decided it would be a good thing to upload a video online showing how you can fool the Tesla sensors into thinking your hands are on the wheel with an orange. No, I'm not going to show you the video here because frankly, it's dangerous. Oranges are for eating, not for hacking the safety protocol of your car's driver assistance package. Enough said. And on that note, it's time for me to bring another episode to a close. Don't forget to like, comment and subscribe, tell your friends about the show and if you've got some feedback, be sure to send it our way. As always, I'll be back soon with more Ecotech goodness, so make sure you hit that notification bell to find out the minute a new show is uploaded. In the meantime, have a great weekend, make sure you do something fun, and don't forget to help keep those wind turbines spinning by switching to New Zealand's only Carbon Zero certified renewable electricity company. Thanks for joining me. I'm Nikki Gordon-Bloomfield. Kakite. See you next time.